afternoon, everyone. So today we're going to do this section 11.3. This is on inference about two means. The last section, everyone, that with two means that were dependent samples, we called it matched pairs. Everything was paired up. Um, could be the same person. It did something twice. It could have been twins. Could have been like husband and wife. In this case, these are independent samples. So one group of people can just be like men, another group could be just rent women, and they can just be randomly placed in these two groups. In this case, so in this problem we'll start with, um, someone's trying to see the difference in different groups, how they learn via a visual manual or a textual manual. And so in this case, we want to see, is there a difference in how these, uh, these two groups learn the material? They were randomly placed in each group. Everyone was a total of 36 students to start with, but they... They randomly placed 18 of them in the visual manual and 18 of the students in the other, other group using the textual manual. And uh, as they state here, researchers wanted to know whether there was a difference in comprehension among students learning a computer program based on the style of the text. And so group one individuals learn the software using a visual manual, while group two learn the software using a textual manual. Um, and the following data represents the scores of students received on an exam given to them after they studied from the manuals. So here's all their scores after learning from these manuals. Uh, the first thing, before we set up the hypothesis test and go through this, uh, we do want to recognize these are independent samples. All right, They're not matched up by pairs, like this one's paired with that person or this one's paired with that one, not at all. Right, so this, these are independent samples. So what we're going to be performing is what's called a two-sample t-test. All right? So we'll be performing a two-sample t-test. And uh, if you want to say, what's the design of this? It's just a completely randomized design. That's what they call it. It's just a completely randomized design. It's not the matched pairs design. So we, we want to make sure we recognize what kind of t-test we're doing when we're, rep when we're comparing these two means. Um, all right, so I'm going to start. I want we're going to set up the hypothesis test for this problem. There we go. H not. H1. I mean, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can write U1 equals mu2. These are the populations. But there's nothing wrong with this. When I'm writing mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2, sometimes you're like, well, who am I going to call group 1 and group 2? Well, we can call this group 1. And we put it all in L1. Why? Well, that was the first group we got on the left side. And your group did. But there's another way you can set this up, everyone. If you find it easier for you to understand this, this subscript, you could write subscript of visual. And mu, it's a subscript of textual. So it's really up to you as a student. You can do the mu use of, use of 1 and the mu sub 2, or the mu sub visual and the mu sub textual. All right. How about this, though? You can write it like this with the 1s and 2s. It's up to you. Let me read the first line again. Researchers wanted to know whether there was a difference and comprehension among students learning this program. So left tail, right tail, or two tail? Two tail test. This is a two tail test, just by that wording. They want to see, do they score better than them? Or do these, this group score better than this group? They want to see, is there a difference? Is there a difference? All right, so we set up our hypothesis test. We're good here. So let's just verify the requirements real quick. Verify the requirements. Well, we would need both of these sample sizes to be greater than or equal to 30. That's not the case right now, is it? I'm going to close, but I want this as 18 and this as 18. So, if we don't stop there, according to our checks, and I can read it from here. If sample size 1 is greater than equal to 30 and sample size 2 is greater than equal to 30, or if each sample's data comes from a population that is approximately normal with no outliers. 
So I do want to point out, everyone, I know we don't have the software that conducts the normal probability plots. But using Minitab software, the normal probability plot of this right here was approximately normal. And the normal probability of this group right here indicated that it was approximately normal. What we can do as a group, we should also check there's no outliers. So I'm going to go to the calculator right now. I'm just going to look at this box plot and that box plot just to make sure there's no outliers. And then we'll be good to go. Then we can start rolling with this. So I'm checking the box plots of these two groups. So going here, first of all, I want to point out in L1 I put it to group 1, visual. In L2 I entered all the values for textual. But I'm going to go to second Y which is step one. I'm going to go here. I'll just turn this on. Ah, oh, and I'll go down here. Enter so it's on a box plot. And I'm going to do L1 first. So I'm going to hit second one on the calculator that's get say L1. The frequency is always one. And I'm hit zoom nine. And I see no outliers. Cool. So no outliers in group one, right? Someone see that? But it looks left skewed though, kind of. He's right. It's a little bit left skewed, or, or, or skewed, skewed to the left. Very good art. But I do want to point out we are good to go with that group because the normal probability plot that was produced with the mini dab software, uh -huh. with those curves like this, all those dots were inside the curves, uh -huh. and so it's approximately normal. I know. Sometimes it's never perfect right in the middle. Well, I'm quickly going to go back to stop plot and just change this L1 to a L2. I'm going to look at this group. And I'll hit zoom 9. No box plots. And all right, you're right, that one might be a little bit skewed to the, uh, to the right, correct? But still, the normal probability plot indicated there's no outliers. What we're really looking for in this, I'll be honest, is there's no outliers. Okay. We don't know that as little Bing, 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 bing. So that's one of the requirements. We just kind of make sure there's no outliers. And the normal probability plots didn't indicate that they're it's approximately normal. So now we're good to go. So I'll turn this off. So I'm going to write that down. I know we didn't have it, but normal probability plots. Did indicate. At the distributions are approximately normal. The box plots for both groups show no outliers. So we're good to go. We're ready to roll with this. We can now use the t-distribution of one. Now you know what's interesting? What if the sample sizes were gradient equal to 30? Then I wouldn't good. have to do all that. I don't got that. Like if N1 had a sample size of 50, I wouldn't have to go through this, look at the box plots, anything like that. But this was given to you. If you're wondering, where is the normal probability plot that was produced with the other software not with our TID 384, but we were told that in this problem. So we're like, okay. Check. All right, so we're ready to roll with this test. Everyone, we're going to start by performing a test. Let's do three things. Let's do the classical approach. All right. Then we'll do the p-value approach. And then let's also look at a confidence interval. We'll also look at a confidence interval. It won't be hard because we're using the technology. What's, what's the alpha level? What's that? Uh, alpha level. Oh, and the alpha level, thanks Art. The alpha level for this problem is 0 0.05. I'm going to put that really big right here. The alpha level, the level of significance is a 0 0.05. Alright. That seems to be the most common alpha level, do you agree? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they use 0.01 when we're looking at some kind of a, you know, they're administering a drug or something like that. All right. 
Let's do the classical root. T, everyone, we're using T because we got means. One, two, three. One, two, three. T equals zero here, right? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. T equals negative one, negative two, negative three. And you know what the first thing we do, everyone, on a classical approach? Don't we get T crit? Yep. Now, where am I shading? Because it's got not equal to. Both sides. Both sides. But you're good. Seriously, that's the key to this hypothesis. That you're like, you got to shade both tails. You got to shade 5% over here, and you got to shade 5% over here. Okay. I'll shade about 5%. I'll shade a little bit. 